Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear. And I am here to do the booktube tag A to Z, hot or not. I was tagged to do this by Margaret and her video will be linked down below as will the original creator's video. And for this, we're just going to go through the alphabet. There's a word associated with each letter and I get to tell you whether hot, meaning I like it, or not, meaning I don't. So jumping on in. First one is A, audiobooks. And for me, that is a not. I'm not a big audiobook fan. I'm very, very picky when I'm listening to something and the majority of the time when I've tried an audiobook it has not worked well for me. Mo I find that most audiobook narrators are trying to do voices or they will inflect on a word in a sentence that I don't think they should. I would rather my audiobook narrator just read the book and let me put the inflection on or let me like do the little voices in my own head. So yeah, audiobooks, not. B, Bill Dung's Roman, and I probably butchered that, but it's dealing with a person's formative years or spiritual education. And I'm going to say hot. I do have a lot of books that deal with people growing up. Like I have Anne of Green Gables, that, that is her formative years. So yeah, I, I like books where people are growing up. C. Children's books. Hot. I have found that as I'm getting older, the young adult books I'm having a harder time with, but I am enjoying children's and middle grade a whole lot more now. Especially because I have a granddaughter who's one and I am now on the lookout for what books do I want to introduce to her that will give her a wider reading experience. So hot children's books. D, digital. And I'm going not. I am not a big digital book reader. I will read digital books if I have to. For example, right now I am a judge for this breakfast contest and so the authors have provided us a digital copy. And I did use that to read the first 10 to 20%. But then I went ahead and bought my own physical copies for the books that we're reading further because I really don't enjoy the digital book experience. I typically am only a big digital book reader when I'm traveling because I can't take a whole bunch of books with me. For the most part, digital, not. E, experimental. Also a not for me. When I think of experimental, I actually think of experimental film since I was a film major and I hated that class. I don't really enjoy it in books. I'm not picking up a book to be wowed or like what new thing are they doing? How are they pushing the boundaries? Which kind of leads into the conversation about what books should be nominated for awards. I know some people think that those books that are pushing the boundaries, oh, those are the ones that should be nominated. And for me, I'm like, I want to be able to enjoy the book I'm reading. I don't mind experimentation a little bit, but when you're going further out there, no, not my thing. So not, which I know might be surprising since I love science fiction, but I like that the technology in the book is interesting. Not that the reading experience is experimental. F. Fantasy. Hot. Yeah. Most of what I read is fantasy or science fiction. For me, there is a difference. But yeah, looking at all my childhood favorites, my fantasy shelf has more books on it than my science fiction shelf. And it's kind of interesting to see over the years how my taste in fantasy have changed as well. G, graphic novel, hot. I'm a big fan of manga as 
anybody who's been reading my channel the past few months has seen a lot of manga on there. But I also do like my graphic novels as well. I enjoy getting to see the different art styles that then complement the story that is being written. Yeah, the written story. I find that reading manga or graphic novels can be an easier mental experience a lot of the times. H. Horror. Not. Horror is just not a genre that I'm interested in. Now, I have been on the fringes of the horror. Things like Mexican Gothic and What Moves the Dead, I find that I do like, but I'm not interested in the other horror that's out there. So, nope. I. Inspirational. Not, I, I'm not reading to be inspired. And also, like, inspirational reads about this great hero, or this great person has done this. Like, I like reading biographies and memoirs of astronauts, but I don't read them because they're inspirational. I read them because, for the information, because I'm interested in history. So, inspirational as a category, not. J. Journalism. Depends. I definitely have read really great books written by journalists or from a journalist point of view about their experiences and have enjoyed it, but it's not necessarily a category that I'm looking for. Maybe. It depends. K. Keech. Kish. I have no clue how to say this word. I, I recognize it when I see it and I know when people say it, but it's not a word that I personally use, so. that And that's always how you know someone as a reader, is when they say a word, but they don't say it correctly, but they know what the word is because they've read it. It's just not what they say. Then you know that they're that person's a reader. So the definition for this has a popular or sentimental appeal. And I know definitely there is sci-fi and fantasy on my shelves that are considered popular. I don't choose to pick up books because they're popular, so I'm going to say not. I choose books based off of whether or not they interest me. L. Library. Hot. Most of the books that I read come from the library. For many years, I was on a no book buying ban because I just didn't have the money. And so all my reads were from the library. And still, to this day, that is what I do. Um, in fact, those books at the very top are what my husband likes to call my library shelf because those are all the library books that I have out at this time. I am a mood reader, so not all of them will be read, or not all of them will be read in the current cycle that I have them, but... I get a lot of books out from the library anyway. So, library. Hot. M. Mystery. Not really. Um, <laughs> I like mystery when it's packaged with something else. Like, Mer Lafferty is a sci-fi writer that she's been combining mystery with sci-fi. I like that combination, but a straight mystery itself is not typically something I read. But I don't mind mystery as a subgenre. But mystery as a main driver genre? No, not really. N. Nonfiction. Hot. I do like nonfiction. I am very slow in reading nonfiction, but I do enjoy it. I learn so many things and get to see different perspectives. I think that fiction and nonfiction complement each other. Is nonfiction will say, this is what is going on or this is what has gone on in our past, or this is what is going on now. But our fiction gives us the opportunity to go through the emotions and learn empathy so that when we're confronted with nonfiction in real life, we know how to handle it. 
so I, that's why I see that they go together. But nonfiction, I think, is very necessary to read because we should not shy away from what is the truth or what other people's perspectives are, whether that is not your truth. So, nonfiction, hot. Oh, omnibus. Depends. I don't mind buying omnibuses when it's something that I know I enjoy. So like, for example, Omnibus. It's the first three books in the series. And I bought it that way because I know I'm going to read it. However, this Douglas Adams is also an Omnibus and it's not something I would have purchased myself. It's my dad's copy that I've been slowly going through, supposedly. I'm not somebody who would buy an omnibus to read it if I've never read the book. Omnibuses are more for books that I have read already, and that's just an easier way for packaging. I also don't mind omnibuses when they're novellas, because novellas can be really expensive and they're short. <laughs> so I don't mind those being packaged into an omnibus to make it easier on the pocket. P. Poetry. Not. I am not a poetry person. Every once in a while a poem will sing to me and I'll be like, yes, this is why people like poetry. I get it now. But for the most part, no, it's not my favorite thing to read. Sorry, David, because I know you love poetry, but poetry is not hot for me. Q. Quests. Yeah, I'm a fantasy reader and a sci-fi reader. A lot of those have quests in it. Yeah. <laughs> so quests, pretty much yes. Romance, also hot. I do like romance as a main category. I like my romance also packaged in my fantasy and my sci-fi. I am more of a fan of historical romances than contemporary romances, but it just depends how they're written. Oh, one of my author tuber friends, Emma Bennett, I've been enjoying her romances. They're, you know, kind of novella size actually for me, but they feel more real, like how people would actually behave in a romance, and I like that. So those are fun. So romance, hot. Science fiction, hot. I don't think I really need to explain this one more because I am a big sci-fi reader. Hot. T, translation. Books translated from one language to into another. Hot. I realize in the past a lot of what was translated was more literary fiction or mysteries, but more and more recently we've been getting science fiction fantasy translated. I'm enjoying getting to read more science fiction fantasy from other places in the world. And I get to do that when it gets translated because my Spanish is rudimentary. I speak kids Spanish. I read kids Spanish for the most part. I love translated books. Hot. You. Ubermensch. The Superman or the Extraordinary Human. Characters who can. I'm not certain. This one might be a either or. I mean, I like characters who are competent. I think those are good. But if all they are is superhuman and they can do everything, everything that comes with them, that's kind of a boring story. If nothing, or if they don't have any challenges or any weakness. So maybe this one kind of falls more on the not so much. V. Victorian. And this is literature from 1837 to 1901. Yeah, we're gonna go not just because I don't have any on my shelf that I recognize off the top of my head. W. Western. Also not. For me, westerns are more about manifest destiny and white men killing Indians, and they're not my thing. Not at all. Not. 
X, X-rated. And I'm guessing this has to do with romance? Well, how about this? I'm going to take this as having to do with romance because if it's horror X-rated, it's in that. But if it is romance X-rated, I don't mind. But I guess it depends. I don't do dark romances, so maybe with X-rated we're going to go not for horror and for dark romances. No. Why? Young adult. And at this point of time in my life, I'm going to say not. The thinking processes of the characters drive me nuts. And I know at one point of time, I enjoyed it. I mean, I'm still able to read some of my favorite young adult series that are still on my shelf, but I think that's because they don't fall into the typical young adult shticks that are more common in the age category. Because young adult is an age category, it's not a, a genre. But there are certain tendencies that young adult books have that young adults and teens find appealing to them. But when your brain chemistry has switched, they're not appealing anymore. So, young adult, not. And Z, zeitgeist, spirit or mood of the times. And, I mean, to me this kind of makes me think of the popular books again, and not. I don't mind books like the Kaiju Preservation Society, which talk about COVID and, you know, what life is like during that the, with the fantasy or with the science fiction story happening as well. That's fine. But if it's specifically just focused on, like, whether or not it's popular of the time, then it's a no. And it could be I'm just misunderstanding this word. So that is the end of the alphabet and the end of my hot or not. If you agree with me or disagree with me, please let me know down below because this was fun. Also, if you are interested in doing this at all, I definitely think you should be tagged. And if you do do this, please leave me a link down below so that I can go watch. Thank you and have a great day.